In this video, we're going to be talking about independence of path in a vector field. And in this particular problem, we've been asked to show that the line integral is independent of path, and then if it is, to evaluate the integral. Now, the line integral we're going to be dealing with is the integral of 2x e to the negative y dx plus quantity 2y minus x squared e to the negative y dy over the curve c, where c is any path connecting the coordinate points 1, 0, and 2, 1. So our first task is to show that the line integral is independent of path. How are we going to do that? Well, we know that the line integral of a conservative vector field is always independent of path. So if we can show that the vector field we're dealing with is conservative, then we can prove that this line integral is independent of path, and that's probably our easiest way of going about this. So how would we tell that this vector field we're dealing with is conservative? Well, first of all, the vector field we're going to denote with a capital F. This capital F is always notation for a vector field. We need to find an equation that defines the vector field F. So the vector field is going to be capital F of x, y. And to build the equation that models the vector field, we're going to take values from our line integral. So we're going to take the coefficient on dx, so this value here, we're going to pull into our vector field equation. We're also going to pull the value in front of dy. So what we need to know is that the equation of a vector field is always capital F of xy is equal to p times i plus q times j, where p is the function in front of our dx notation here, and q is the function in front of our dy notation. So we're going to take whatever's in front of dx and plug it in for p. So we're going to get 2x e to the negative y times i, and then take whatever we have in front of dy and plug it in for q. So we'll get plus quantity 2y minus x squared e to the negative y times j. And this is an equation for our vector field f. Now, how do we tell whether or not this vector field is conservative? Well, a conservative vector field has to meet two conditions. First, it has to be open and simply connected. So we're going to have to determine whether or not this vector field is open and simply connected. If it is, then we also have to show that the partial derivative of p with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of q with respect to x. If those things are both true, it's open and simply connected, and those partial derivatives are equal to one another, then that proves that the vector field F is a conservative vector field. So let's talk about open and simply connected. The way that we determine whether or not it's open and simply connected, we look at our functions P and Q. So let's just look at them because we have them written already up here in orange and green. So this is P and this is Q. We're looking to see whether or not there are any points at which P and Q are undefined. So some of the things we're going to be looking for are values underneath the square root sign that we can make negative, denominators in fractions that we can make zero because that would make the fraction undefined, natural logs where we can make the value inside the natural log zero or negative, that would make it undefined. Obviously, we don't have any of those in P and Q here. And in fact, P and Q, there's no values we could plug in for X and Y that will make P and Q undefined. These are simple polynomial functions, and there's no way that we can make these undefined. What that tells us is that the vector field F is open and simply connected because these are defined everywhere. In fact, they're defined everywhere in the entire plane R squared. So we know that f is open and simply connected. Now we just need to show that the partial derivative of p with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of q with respect to x. So let's go ahead and find the partial derivative of p with respect to y. Again, we're taking what's inside of our orange box here. We also have it right here. The partial derivative of that with respect to y, that means we treat x as a constant. So 2x here is just a constant coefficient on this e to the negative y. Well, what's the derivative of e to the negative y? We just bring this negative sign out in front and otherwise leave the e to the negative y. So the partial derivative of p with respect to y is going to be negative 2x e to the negative y. Now what we're hoping for is that that's going to be equal to the partial derivative of q with respect to x. Well, looking at what we have inside of our green box here, this is q, taking the partial derivative with respect to x, this 2y term is going to drop away because there's no x variable involved in it, so it's just a constant and the derivative is 0. The derivative of negative x squared e to the negative y, we're treating y as a constant, so this e to the negative y is a constant coefficient in front of the x squared term. 
the derivative of x squared is just 2x, so we include this negative sign and we get negative 2x and we leave the e to the negative y, e to the negative y. And as you can see, we have the same value on the left and the right. This tells us that these partial derivatives are equal to one another. And because that's true, and because we know that f is open and simply connected, we can go ahead and say that the vector field f is in fact a conservative vector field. Because f is a conservative vector field, we know that the line integral inside of f will be independent of path. So this line integral is going to be independent of path, and we've proven independence of path, so we're done with the first part of our question. The second part of our question is to evaluate the line integral over the curve c. Now in order to evaluate the line integral, the first thing we need to do is find a function for lowercase f. When we have a vector field that we know is conservative, so when this vector field, capital F, is conservative, we know that there is some function such that capital F is equal to the gradient of the function lowercase f. This function f is called the potential function. What we're doing is looking for this function, lowercase f. We need to find that, then we'll plug it into our integral and evaluate it over the curve c. In order to find an equation for this potential function, the first thing we need to do is again draw from our functions p and q. When it comes to the potential function, p is actually equal to the partial derivative of the potential function f with respect to x. So we say p is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x, so we get f with respect to x of xy equals p, which we know to be 2x e to the negative y. So we have the partial derivative of our potential function f with respect to x. We also know that q is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to y, xy equals, and we just grab q here, 2y minus x squared e to the negative y. So now we have the two first order partial derivatives of our potential function f with respect to x and y, but we need to get the original function just f. So the way that we're gonna do that, we're gonna take the partial derivative with respect to x and we're going to integrate this function with respect to x. So when we have the derivative with respect to x and we integrate with respect to x, we get back to our original function f. So integrating this function with respect to x, our left-hand side is just gonna become f of xy, like this, and integrating the right-hand side with respect to x, we treat y as a constant, so this e to the negative y pairs with this two to become a coefficient on this x variable here. And so when we integrate with respect to x, we just integrate this x variable here and we get one half x squared. So if we take the coefficient two e to the negative y, and then we multiply by one half x squared, when we just integrate this x variable, we'll get our twos here to cancel, and what we're left with is just x squared e to the negative y. Now we're not done with this function f of x, y. It's important to remember that although we just took the integral with respect to x of this partial derivative with respect to x, we need to also account for the variable y, right? We took the integral with respect to x, we didn't account for y. In order to account for y, what we need to do is add to this essentially a constant of integration. Remember when we first learned about indefinite integrals, we take the integral and we always add c to account for a constant of integration. Well here, to account for the variable y, we have to add a function in terms of y, which we'll call g of y. And that accounts for the variable y since we only integrated with respect to x. But we need a value for g of y. This is kind of like an initial value problem where you have this constant here. We need to solve for this. And in order to do that, what we're gonna do is go this direction, take the partial derivative of f of x, y with respect to y. When we do that, we'll get the partial derivative of f with respect to x, y, and we'll be able to compare our answer to this function over here since the left-hand sides will be the same. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Taking the partial derivative of this with respect to y, we'll get f sub y of x, y is equal to, we treat x as a constant, so this x squared is just a coefficient, and the derivative of e to the negative y with respect to y, we just pull the negative sign down in front, we end up with negative x squared e to the negative y. The partial derivative of g of y with respect to y is just gonna be g sub y of y, y, the partial derivative of g with respect to y. 
Now here's why this method works. What we can identify is that we have this partial derivative of f with respect to y, which we got from our function q. We just found the same function. We can see that our left-hand sides are equal. What that tells us is that we can compare the right-hand sides and use that to solve for this value g sub y of y. So comparing the right-hand sides, if we set those equal to each other, what we see is that in both cases we have this negative x squared e to the negative y, negative x squared e to the negative y. So those two we're going to set equal to each other because they're exactly the same. What that leaves us with in this function is 2y, and in this function g sub y of y. So in order for these two to be equal, 2y has to be g sub y of y. So what we want to say then is 2y is equal to g sub y of y. Now remember, we're trying to find a value for g of y, and here we only have a value for the partial derivative of g with respect to y. So what we can try to do is integrate both sides of this function with respect to y. When we integrate the right-hand side of this function with respect to y, since we have the partial derivative with respect to y, those two operations cancel out and we're just left with g of y. Integrating the left-hand side with respect to y, we get y squared, we just move this 2 up into the exponent, and now what we have to do is remember that because we just took an integral, we have to account for the constant of integration, so we'll go ahead and add a constant of integration to the left-hand side, which we'll call k, so we'll say k plus y squared is going to be our integral. The reason we didn't have to add a function to account for the constant of integration is because this is a single variable equation here. We just have y's, we took the integral with respect to y, so we can add a constant k. We added g of y here because we took the integral with respect to x of a multivariable function, and so we still had to account for something in terms of y, so we added the function g of y. Here we have one variable, so we can just add a straight constant k. So now we have this value for g of y, which is y squared plus k, and we can go ahead and plug that back in for g of y. So now our function f of xy looks like this. We get f of xy is equal to here x squared e to the negative y plus g of y, which we found to be y squared plus k, so plus y squared plus k. K. And leaving just this k value here is an acceptable constant to leave in our f of xy equation, our potential function equation. So this is our function f that we were looking for. Now the question is, how exactly do we use this to evaluate the line integral? Well, we know that our equation f, f of xy, the equation for the vector field, is equal to this value here, which is the value that we have inside of our line integral. So basically this line integral says, the line integral of f over the curve c. Well, since we know that f, capital F, is equal to the gradient of our function lowercase f, we can just substitute in this gradient of f for capital F, and we can instead call the line integral the integral of the gradient of f over the curve c. This function we found is actually the gradient of f, so we can go ahead and plug that in for gradient of f, and we get the line integral over c of x squared e to the negative y plus y squared plus k. Now here's the cool part about path independence. This line integral over the curve c is basically the definite integral from the initial point 1, 0 to the terminal point 2, 1. So we can say that this is the integral from 1, 0 to 2, 1 of the function x squared e to the negative y plus y squared plus k. But because we know that the line integral is independent of path, because it doesn't matter which path we take from 1, 0 to 2, 1, the line integral will always have the same value, we don't really have to integrate this. All we have to do is plug in our terminal point and subtract whatever we get when we plug in our initial point, and that's just straight fundamental theorem of calculus. So all we do is take this value here, we want to plug in our upper limit of integration 2, 1. So plugging that into this function here, we plug in 2 for x, we get 2 squared, which is 4. So we're going to get 4 times e to the negative y. Well, we have 1 here for y, so we're going to get e to the negative 1. Then we plug in 1 for y here, we get plus 1 squared, or just plus 1, and then we add k. So then we're going to subtract whatever we get when we plug in 1, 0. Plugging in 1 for x, we get 1 squared, which is just 1. 
multiply that by e to the negative 0, because we plug in 0 for y, so just e to the 0. And then we add to that y squared, well y is 0, so we get plus 0. And then we have plus k, so plus k. And now we're just simplifying this. So we have 4 times e to the negative 1. We can move this e to the negative 1 to the denominator, and it becomes a positive exponent. So we have 4 over e to the positive 1, or just 4 over e. Then we have plus 1 plus k. Here, e to the 0 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. So distributing this negative sign, we get minus 1. 0 goes away, obviously. And distributing the negative sign, we get minus k. And as you can see, we have plus 1 minus 1 and plus k minus k. So our final answer is just 4 over e. And this is the line integral of the conservative vector field f over the curve c.